Hey guys, Dr. Jeff Fullery, Whole Body Health. Uh, Want to go over how to use Gua Sha if somebody's having knee pain or knee discomfort. Um, there's some rules that we use with the Gua Sha or the scraping that are kind of universal. We want to make sure that we stay away from uh, joint lines or where the skin is very close to the bony tissue. Uh, the other part we want to do is we de I determine or I recommend determining which direction you're going to go on treatment of the tissue based on what the tissue feels like. We're looking for a gritty or um, crunchy sensation. That's where the most adhesion in the fascia is. And um, typically we're going to treat that until it's significantly reduced or completely uh, gone or relieved. And so talking about the knee today, so we'll want to work the, dip, the end of the quad muscle or the distal quad as it goes into the knee itself. Um, you, can you, you can treat the inside part of the quad, the medial, right on top of the quad or the outside part of the quad, which would be the, uh, the IT band as well. Um, so medial center and lateral parts of the quadriceps and other muscles associated with that. Also, you can also do the hamstrings. We'll show you that as well as you're gonna to wanna to do a little bit of the um, upper part of the lower leg of the calf. And so I'm just gonna, I've got Judy here donating her leg for us to show you. And I'm gonna to move towards the knee first. And there's a little bit of crunchiness right there. And then we're gonna move away from the knee. And that feels a lot more sandy or crunchy. Does that feel the same to you? Yeah. So Judy agrees with that. And so I'm not, bearing down on that tissue. All I'm doing is putting just a little bit of pressure. Um, I'm telling you that this can be extremely sensitive for some folks. And uh, when people are ticklish, sometimes it will actually uh, feel ticklish as well. Uh, just a side note, tickle and pain run in the same uh, nerves in the nervous system. So oftentimes something that feels ticklish, if you remove the user like if i had judy do this it wouldn't tickle it actually just would hurt so that's something this is something you can treat yourself when you're doing this with the shoulders and the back and some other areas it's it's a lot harder to do but when you're doing the knee or the elbows or the ankles even um, the foot you can do this yourself and so super easy um, a lot more crunch on that it band Judy does a lot of exercise, a lot of cardio. She rides the, the uh, spin bike quite a bit. So not surprising that she's got some adhesion in that IT band. So we're just gonna work that a little bit more. Um, she's laughing slash crying right now. Um, she does it more when I treat her because she's not always the most compliant patient, but um, there we go. So we got Judy flipped over and now this is the, the back of that right knee, the back of that right leg. So same, same thought process goes through uh, determining where you're gonna treat with the scraper on the back of the leg. So a little bit of lubricant put in all three places on the thigh, uh, medial, center, and lateral, as well as a little bit on the upper calf. The area you wanna be really careful with is the back of the knee. Same thing with the, the front of the elbow. They're hot, they're highly vascular areas. And so any work you do in there, you wanna be, there is a muscle here to treat, um, but you wanna go very, very, very lightly. Um, so I'm gonna take you to the hamstring first and we're gonna move towards the knee. Right there, there's a lot of crunch. The middle, there's some crunch as well. The outside, not as bad. And then we're gonna move up towards the so there's crunch going both ways. Which one feels more crunchy to you? Going up. Going up. So I'll oftentimes I'll ask the, the patient which one feels more to you and we'll go with their discernment which one that we'll want to do. And so I'm just going to move towards the, away from the knee, towards the buttocks. And again, I'm gonna do that until it feels like it starts to let go. You can see there's some redness forming in the leg. And that one's biting a little bit, yeah. 
Judy? A little bit. A little bit. So we, I mean, we spend a lot of time sitting um, as students and somebody who's working. Um, so the hamstrings will get very, very tight from the amount of sitting that we do. We just wanna make sure we release that, um, the adhesion in, that, in those hamstrings. And then upper calf, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move towards the knee. I'm gonna move away from the knee. It feels more away from the knee, right, Jude? Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little bit here. And she, it's interesting because she's not getting super red. A lot of times, I mean, if you did this to me, my skin would be very, very, very red. So different people get, you know, respond differently to this. So you're not doing anything wrong. It can even give the, the look of a bruise. Um, so don't be surprised. Um, you're not doing anything wrong. You just wanna make sure you put some lubricant on the tissue before you do it, as well as um, make sure that you, you're you not pushing too deeply. And then I'm gonna come to the back of the knee and just very, very, very lightly kind of scrape towards the top of the thigh. And there's just a little bit of gristle in there. And this can actually, if there's issues, adhesion in the back of the knee, it'll cause a lot of knee discomfort. So, and like I said, we spend a lot of time in this leg being shortened. And so all these muscles back the back of the leg get really tight and they recalibrate themselves to a short length from being shortened so much. So I think that's it. I appreciate you joining us today. Uh, please check out our links below and the uh, description. And uh, thanks a lot.